Hi, this is Matthew. Sorry for the uh, low quality video. I apologize. Um, this verse, this uh, video is going to be like a short uh, video or longer video, depending on how long I talk and inspired for about achieving extraordinarily more, exceedingly and abundantly more than uh, you uh, uh, wished for and desired. Um, there's a verse uh, in Ephesians 3.20 that I'll paraphrase that uh, he, he can do exceedingly and abundantly more than we ask or think according to the power that works within us. Uh, that's uh, found if you want the proper um, uh, quality verse uh, quoted properly, you can look at Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 in the New King James Version, which is the version I most respect. I've been pondering uh, this uh, teaching for about a week, like uh, percolated coffee that takes time to percolate. Some of my best messages aren't preached or shared with me just getting inspiration for the message and sharing a video and posting it. Um, they're best pondered on and reflected on uh, for some measure of time. I've been thinking of this uh, for about a week. Jesus told a parable uh, of the talents and he shared a parable of the miners, M-I-N-A-S, and the two very similar uh, parables. Uh, in the parable of the talents, Jesus uh, shared about a rich man or a, or a master uh, planning to go away on a long trip. And before he left, he gave one of his servants five talents of gold, which is like, um, I looked it up once and it's like years and years and years worth of income uh, that you'd have to have uh, to buy those uh, five talents of gold, like um Hundreds of thousands of dollars, five talents of gold was in those days. He gave one five, one two talents, and one one talent. And uh, I've got a book called The Narrow Way, The Parables of Jesus, where I go into a detail on the 54 parables of Jesus. So I know a little bit about uh, what each of the parables of Jesus actually mean and um I think I've done a teaching before on the parable of the talents that was a one-hour video. Uh, so I have quite a bit of revelation on uh, that parable. But in the parable, uh, he gave uh, each to a man according to their ability. So uh, I, I uh, uh, discerned, I, I sort of worked out that uh, as uh, he was giving them talents, he measured their ability. So uh, there's certain people in the world that come from a wealthy family and can afford a good education, and there's been no sexual abuse or trauma or alcoholic father or any sort of abusive uh, relationships happening in the house because of the father or the mother. Uh, no drug problems, and they've come from like an Ivy League sort of uh, background. And uh, the person that comes from that wealthy or middle-to-do, middle-class family uh, with a good education, uh, he, he has the ability to make something good of his life. And according to his ability, he's given uh, an appropriate amount of money to steward uh, for the master, someone with less ability, with ne less capability of achieving success, uh, he's he's given two talents of gold, and someone who didn't come from a great background and not wealth and not good education, with uh, little ability to produce wealth, 
is given one talent of gold. So what I understand for that and what I teach in my parables is God understands where we come from. He understands our past. He understands what uh, situation we're born into. He understands our potential and he gives us a destiny and a purpose according to where we come from and what's possible for us. So I've uh, just had like a revelation uh, in the last uh, month or so that what if uh, this was just an illustration that Jesus shared, but what if uh, the parables of the talents uh, could actually be more impacting and deeper than what's told in the story. So the man who got five talents was massive amount of money. Um, the master come back after a long time and uh, settled accounts with his servants. And the one with five talents gave him another five talents. He'd used the money and invested wisely and got five more. The one with two talents had invested his talents and gave the master back two more. But the one that only had one talent had uh, hidden the talent uh, and was afraid to take a risk with the talent and simply gave the talent back to the master. And the parable of Jesus, uh, it says that he was a lazy and wicked servant and his talent was taken off him given to the one that had 10 talents who'd proven that he has an ability with money and ability to use his assets and his qualities in his life to produce fruit and to be able to steward money and look after uh, resources. And the one with one talent was thrown into the outer darkness was the weeping and gnashing of teeth. There's a popular teaching that the outer darkness is a place outside of heaven uh, people, some people who teach grace uh, don't believe that a Christian can actually go to hell. So they have an interpretation that uh, um, uh, the play, the outer darkness is just outside of heaven where they never really enter into heaven, but are remorseful and grating their teeth and unhappy because they, they didn't really get to heaven. Believe me, I... Uh, been taken on, on two occasions uh, to a place near hell called the outer darkness and I've experienced both times 15 minutes in complete darkness with people that were screaming and cussing and using uh, Jesus in blasphemy ways and it was a pace of uh, torture and the first 15 minutes I went there I thought I'd crossed over at, in my mental illness and I thought I'd never be coming back. When I was there for 15 minutes, I was crying out to Jesus, asking him what was wrong and could he speak to me and tell me what was going on. And uh, I heard silence. And I've been a Christian talking to Jesus since I was eight when I was sent. And so I'd been talking to him for over 30 years. And I've never encountered a time where Jesus didn't hear my cry and answer, but it seemed when I was in this place of pitch darkness, of cursing and swearing and people being angry at each other, it seemed that Jesus couldn't even hear me. And uh, being cut off from Jesus uh, for even 15 minutes, uh, the time really stretched and it was like it was hours and it was uh, a real uh, place of suffering for me. And I can imagine... Even if you weren't in flames of fire, being in a place where people are angry and cursing each other, uh, the um, uh, the suffering would, would be really bad. And uh, when I was there, I had all the memory of my Christian life and I was trying to work out in that initial 15 minutes when I didn't know what was happening, what I'd done wrong. Like I, I couldn't work out what I'd done wrong to lose my salvation and be sent to that place. So this is where Jesus said the person who'd been given a talent and hadn't done anything with the talent uh, was sent. And um, if you uh, read uh, my book on the parables, which is 
I, I believe one of the best books on understanding the parables of Jesus. If you read my book, you'll come to understand that um, if you understand, if you don't find out your life's purpose and you don't practice that life purpose, uh, you could be found in a position where you don't even go to heaven. Um, so in the last six weeks, I've been pondering. I I um I didn't come. I come from a poor family, and uh, my dad was a really experienced fisherman, and he needed to be because we were so poor that two meals a week for the family, like meals at dinner time, uh, two meals for the family each week had to be fish because we were so poor. Mum couldn't afford. Uh, to give us meat uh, seven days a week. And uh, my dad had to be a good fisherman uh, to catch enough uh, for four children and two adults for two meals. So he had to uh, provide enough fish for 12 servings every week consistently for 30 or 40 years. Uh, so my dad really applied himself to the art of uh, fishing. And uh, I asked him once, uh, what quality of fisherman he was. And he said he was in the top 5%. Uh, my dad was so good that he could have had a fishing show and taught people how to catch fish. My dad was really good and he needed to be good uh, because we would have starved. So I uh, never come from money and I never come from good education and I just barely passed my high school grade marks Um uh, at that time in my life, I'd uh, been sexually abused by a pedophile and uh, and I'd uh, begun like a homosexual uh, sort of uh, meeting up with strange men uh, on beaches uh, on the weekends and my life had uh, gone to ruin and uh, I was in a very sad place. So um, I was mentally suffering and I didn't really apply myself to my school. So I didn't have good grades and didn't do good w well at school. I didn't come from a wealthy family. You could hardly say I had a wonderful education. So I didn't have much potential to do much. Um, but uh, someone uh, with more opportunity have five talents and ten talents. They have uh, more ability to achieve great things. And for years I've been pondering and seeing myself as the man that was given one talent. Uh, and I know in the parable he hides his talent, but I believe that um, there's some people uh, in life that are given one talent that do a good job and get another talent back. And it's just three individuals in the parable, but it's a parable of the kingdom and it's a parable of life on earth. And so there's not just one person with one talent. There's one third of the Christians in the world are given one talent, and a lot of them uh, make some use of it. So you can't uh, read uh, literally everything in a parable. They're symbolic, uh, and uh, we're meant to uh, see deeper meaning. So I've always considered myself a one-talent man, Um I, I used to be prideful, and it's interesting that many people are prideful, know a lot about one subject, and become so confident in that subject they they start boasting about how good they are. That's all they can talk about is that subject that they've become good at, and uh, you don't want to be around them because they think they know it all. And uh, it's interesting because I lived a lot of years being prideful. And uh, I thought I was better than most people. And um, it's very interesting for uh, someone who's prideful. It's coming from a place of not love for self and uh, a, a place of very low self-esteem. People with a low self-esteem often try and get good at something to make themselves feel worthwhile and when they become very good at something, they start to boast and that's all they can talk about is how good they are. And uh, they really smell pride 
fried has an odor and it really smells. Um, so at one stage, I knew a lot about Christianity, but I was really prideful about it. No one ever wanted to talk to me. Um, so I, I've since been humbled by the Lord and uh, become uh, knowledgeable, but uh, I had a lot of grace and I don't boast about my knowledge anymore. I don't think so. So I've been pondering for years and more recently in the last six weeks, could you be a person that received one talent but had a 10-talent return? Like, could you be a person who was given one talent in life but gave the master 10 talents when he returned? Could you uh, do something really exponential really supernatural with your abilities and do like a miracle. And uh, the verse, Ephesians 3.20, uh, not many people get to manifest that verse in the Bible. Um, uh, verses in the Bible uh, are true and can happen, but not everyone lives a supernatural overcoming successful Christian lives. And there's many powerful promises in the Bible that never get realized in the average Christian's life. Uh, so I, I don't meet many people whose lives are a manifestation of God doing exceedingly and abundantly more than they could ask or think. Uh, but sometimes the marriage can be that. I like the best sort of marriage is when the husband is waking up each morning, pinching himself on the cheek, wondering how did he ever uh, deserve this wife he has. And if the wife is doing the same thing, thinking about the husband, how could she ever deserve that husband? Uh, they've both done something exceedingly abundantly more than they can ask or think. The best sort of marriage is when both spouses don't think uh, they were really worthy of the other spouse and feel so lucky and blessed uh, to have someone in their life. But uh, there's not a lot of people where their achievements in life exceedingly and abundantly are more than they ever thought was possible or they could ever actually pray for. So... Um, uh, some people can achieve something that goes beyond their wildest dreams. And uh, with God, everything is possible. And it says, according to the power that works within us. So uh, if you learn to surrender your life and give your life over to God, uh, he can use the power of the Holy Spirit to direct your life and you can have um, impossible outcomes like exponential outcomes miraculous outcomes and uh and when an ordinary man does something impossible something that uh people would never believe that he could achieve then the man doesn't get the glory it's actually god that's given the glory that uh, god has done such a great work with the person so i've often thought well i identified as the person most uh, least likely to succeed um, and qualified as a person with one talent. But uh, I've done miraculously well in the last 11 years. And uh, I believe that I've got a ton of reward in heaven, actually. I spiritually compare my intimacy and closeness I have with Jesus and I don't find many people that are closer to Jesus than myself. And uh, I think I've achieved, I've self-published <clears throat> 120 Christian books and have thoroughly taught uh, the Christian message. I uh, <clears throat> Early on, I wrote a book, a, a novel, a fictional work, where the theme was overcoming sexual abuse. And it had 17 different characters in the novel, 
interacting with with each other and 16 of the 17 characters were that were in the novel had a past in sexual abuse <coughs> and are uh, interacting in a red light district in sydney and i had a dream of publishing that book and then it's starting a ministry that promises uh, overcoming sexual abuse and uh, all sorts of addictions uh, through a love of Christ and intimacy with Christ. And I sat on that book and uh, edited that book and built up the self-esteem to get ready to publish that book for 10 years. And then one day the Holy Spirit highlighted a verse to me uh, which said I had to throw the book out and I asked the Holy Spirit, is that what he was saying with a verse? And uh, Jesus told me that um, I wouldn't enjoy church at night if I hadn't thrown out the book. So I got the hard drive. I removed it from the hard drive. Uh, back then it had a floppy disk drive. And I got the floppy disk drive and threw it in the bin and threw it in the trash. And I got the hard copy printout of the book and threw that in the trash. And I threw away my dream and, and the book that... I thought was going to launch me into ministry and success. Jesus said I could never preach if I published that book. And uh, so I had my life set on that book and then I threw away what I believe was going to be the start to my life. Then over the course of 20 years, uh, especially in the last 11 years, God used me to uh, write and self-publish 120 books. So I I did exceedingly and abundantly more than I could dream of. No one, no one has a dream of uh, being a, like a, a, a writer that's written over 100 books. Like I, I meet people on trains and they see me. Uh, dressed pretty casually in track pants, and and uh, and I ask them what they do for a living and have they got family and what they do for fun. And when they finish talking, they ask me what do I do for a living and what I do for fun. And I used to tell them I'm a writer, I write Christian books. And then politely they ask, how many books have you written? Uh, are they published? And I said, yes, I self-publish books on Amazon. And then they asked the question, how many books have you had published? And it used to be 20, then 50, then 80, then 100, 120. And no matter what I said, when I said 20, I, I used to see them, their jaws drop. And I physically had to pick their jaw up from the floor. Like, here's a person that seems like one day away from being homeless and I'm obese and people uh, judge me from my weight and uh, they, they're they looking and talking to like, this stranger that's engaging them in conversation, a bit of uh, a bit weird and trying to have a conversation with a stranger is pretty weird and uh, they're judging me as mentally ill or something like that. When I say I pub I've self-published 80 books, they suddenly realise that they're talking to someone really intelligent and really capable and they find a new form of respect. So I've known throughout the years uh, with my supernatural encounters and uh, my ability to speak to anyone who's in heaven that I was really highly revered in heaven and I set a task to... Uh, do a lot on earth so I get a lot of uh, spiritual reward in heaven. So I imagine that it's possible just because Jesus didn't mention that someone who'd been given one talent could actually uh, bring back a return of 10, but you can, and uh, that you could do exceedingly abundantly more than you could ask or dream sort of backs up the fact that you can do impossible things. So another uh, story in the Bible was uh, that illustrates that uh, impossible things can be achieved is uh, when uh, Jesus needed to uh, feed the 5,000 
men, women and children, about 15,000 people. And he asked, what sort of food have we have? And the little boy had given him five loaves and two fishes. And uh, Jesus shared with me that the little boy saved the day that day. They they didn't create uh, the extra fish and the extra bread out of nothing, but they did a miracle by multiplying uh, the provision that was given. And uh, so it is possible to be given very little and God do a miraculous, powerful uh, miracle of multiplication. So my life is testimony to the fact that you can have a little going for you and do an extraordinary result. I think uh, my YouTube channel aren't uh, professional videos and uh, they're not the most professional videos uh, that you'll see. Uh, and uh, I think my video clocks out about 4,000 views a month. And uh, it can be very depressing uh, when uh, you actually view uh, the analytics and uh, you view uh, the numbers behind your videos, which you can on YouTube, to see that the average uh, listen length was two minutes and it may be a 30 minute video and the average person has stopped listening after two minutes. You sort of wish that uh, that uh, people would listen to your whole message. So um, if you're up to uh, this part in the video and you're holding on because you're finding this engaging and interesting, well, then uh, you'll be happy to know that 80% of the people who are listening have been turned off or switched off the video by now, and you're in the top 20% of people who are listening uh, to this video. And even if there's only one of you listening at the end, I hope that uh, this video impacts you. So that little boy came out with a day's, a day or two's uh, food. Uh, I think he came out with five rolls and two fish is quite a substantial uh, lunch, so perhaps he come out with lunch and dinner, um, and uh, he he was. I find it interesting that we're poor, and uh, uh, I heard uh, one teacher say that there were barley loaves, and barley uh, loaves is a cheaper form of bread. It's not wheat, and barley is less expensive, and fish. Uh, so it wasn't beef; it was fish. So. It was like a poor child. Uh, uh, they would have been wheat rolls if he had more money. So Jesus uh, took this simple offering of this uh, poor little boy. He offered everything he had, and Jesus fed thousands of people. You know, that little boy's got great reward in heaven, and uh, he gets excited every time. Uh, he hears someone preaching his story, and uh, as I um, as I share this message and I use him in the illustration, he's tuning in and he's actually watching this message, and he's very happy with it. Um, that boy didn't come out to feed fifteen thousand people that day. That that boy was willing to try and supply a need. And he gave up everything he had, and Jesus took it from there and did a miracle that's talked about for thousands of years and bragged about. And um, it's interesting that uh, Jesus fed a crowd twice, mentioned in the Gospels, two separate days. But it's interesting that on one of the days he did a miracle, He'd started out the day finding out the news that his cousin, his prophet, John the Baptist, had been beheaded and was dead. So the scripture at the beginning of the day before that story says that Jesus withdrew in a boat across the river to a quiet place or the lake or whatever they call it. 
he went away to a quiet place to mourn and to pray and to spend time with his father. When they got to the other side, a multitude gathered, and Jesus, when all he wanted to do was talk to his father and weep, he just lost his cousin. It's a really sensitive time in Jesus' life. If there was one day where he could have signed off ministry and said, I'm taking time out to attend uh, my uh, cousin's funeral, if there was one day Jesus could have been excused from ministry, this was one of his weakest days, second only to the Garden of Gethsemane, I believe, one of uh, Jesus' weakest moments. But when they reached the other side, it said a multitude gathered and they brought him all their sick. Well, I don't know if if you got 15,000 Christians together in a stadium and you said, come forward, anyone who's got sickness or demons or sins that they can't get on top of, how many do you think would come forward out of 15,000? 500? 1,000? I'd say if you grabbed 15,000 people and you just was dealing with demons and sicknesses and illnesses, there'd be at least a 1,000 people. So Jesus starts the day in a sad way, and he's withdrawn not to be with people but to be by himself and to mourn. And at his weakest moment, in one of the weakest, most vulnerable times in Jesus' life, he gets asked to heal a thousand people. And he physically has to lay hands on each of them and pray for them to be healed. Then he preaches for the whole day, so much so that they couldn't be sent away because they were too weak. Then so that they could have something to eat so they could actually reach the houses. Jesus did one of the mir biggest miracles of his career, but it's his weakest day, guys. Jesus, at his weakest, healed a 1,000 people and fed 15,000 people from a little boy's lunch. I think this may be the first time many of you have heard this message in that light. I don't think many people present the little boy as the hero who saved the day. Uh, uh, I don't see many people seeing the little boy bringing provision for Jesus to multiply the talents. The boy brought his talents. The boy brought everything he had, and Jesus used it to do a miracle. But this was on Jesus' weakest day. How many bad days do you have and you heal a 1,000 people or feed 15,000 people with a miracle? So sometimes you can be born and God can use you to turn your one talent into 10 talents, your one talent into 100 talents, you can do the impossible with Jesus. And uh, I just want to encourage you that you can be poor. You can be with, without qualifications. I've got no formal Bible college certificate. I've got no formal theological college training. But uh, my videos, I think my humble videos, get seen at the moment by about 4,000 people a month. <laughs> I've got articles, 850 articles on a database website on the internet called eZine, articles, E-Z-I-N-E, articles.com. And before I started writing books, I wrote 850 articles uh, that are uh, on the Christian faith. And I think at last look, that gets about 1,500 readers uh, per month, and my videos get about 4,000. But you got to remember, out of the 4,000 views, there's only about 
three, four hundred of those views are getting finished. There's only about not more than 500 people finishing the videos, but there's 4,000 people that start. So how have you started the race? Did you start with one talent? Are you like me that uh, was sexually abused, that had uh, a violent father, that had an angry father? Uh, did you grow up not feeling loved by your brother, a brother who beat you up like me? Did did you get sexually abused? Were you abused in any way? Did you have things happen to you that caused you a lot of pain and drove you to suicide, thoughts of suicide? Have you come from a messed up past? Are you someone that's not likely to succeed? Well, you can do great things in the kingdom. If you work according to the power of the Holy Spirit, if you have the ability to hand over to Jesus everything that you have and now allow him through his Holy Spirit to lead and direct you and use your body and your mouth and your resources to do a miracle, can you do a miracle for Jesus? Can your one talent be used to multiply to 10 or 100 talents? Can you do exceedingly and abundantly more than you can imagine? Can you? That's the question I have for you. I hope uh, this humble video has made you think, and I want to congratulate you uh, if uh, you got to the end of this video. If, if you got to the end of the video, you may want to save this video. Um, and uh, if uh, you've got an account on YouTube and you can comment on videos, I encourage you to um, press like on this video and it'll save you to your like feels. If you want to encourage me uh, uh, that I've done a good job, the more likes I get, uh, the better I feel. And uh, the more likes that are pressed on this video, uh, the better it uh, performs in the algorithms on YouTube and you can make uh, this video more popular. And did you know that if you comment or you press like or you subscribe or you watch a video to the very end, do you think, you know, all of those factors contribute to the success and popularity of an author's video. So... If you find a video quite engaging, you can do a YouTuber a real gift by watching his video to the end. Um, the more people, the higher the percentage of people watching the videos to the end, the better the video performs on searches on YouTube. The higher it up is in the rankings and the more popular the video is. Uh, um, if you like a video or a comment on the video, uh, you do the author a great service. Um, I'm just coming into a place where I'm going to have extra money and I'm going to find um, video uh, promoters and uh, social media experts to promote my Facebook posts and uh, promote uh, my videos and make my videos more popular and grow my channel. And I'm going to turn some of my money into making myself a more successful uh, preacher on video. And uh, if you subscribe to my channel, you'll be able to uh, hear uh, these new messages. And please understand that if you join up to YouTube and get an account, liking list, liking my videos, watching them to the very end and subscribing to my channel and commenting, uh, all will do me a favour. So I'd really appreciate that. I know uh, I haven't uh, asked many people to do that in videos and I sort of tend to get turned off when people are always asking you to like and subscribe uh, to the channels. Um, before they've even gone into the video. But I'd really be blessed if you do, because I'm going to uh, spend some money to promote this video and get this uh, video more widely watched. 
God bless you and keep you. I hope that uh, you are encouraged that it doesn't matter where you start from, God can exceedingly and abundantly do more than you can ever dream of. God bless.